Welcome students. Today we are going to start a new chapter, chapter number 4, Reconstitution of Partnership Firm, in which we are going to study retirement and death of a partner. In this chapter, we are going to see how the existing partnership comes to an end and a new partnership deed is made between the new partners. As both the accounting treatment in retirement and death is the same, that is, we have to calculate what is the amount payable to retiring partner and in case of death, we have to calculate what is the amount payable to the deceased partner or to the legal representative of deceased partner. But all these things will be done after doing all the adjustments relating to goodwill, revaluation or reserves, etc. In today's discussion, we are going to see how the amount payable to the retiring or deceased partner is calculated after all the adjustment, what are the treatment of new ratio, gaining ratio and what are the treatment for goodwill, right. So, we start with the first point that is how do we calculate the amount payable to the retiring or deceased partner. First point is whatever we have to give, we will credit in the partner capital account that is credit balance of the partner capital or current account. Next, goodwill or the profits or reserves to be calculated for that particular partner and the share in revolution profit or loss and the interest, profit, salary, whatever we have to give to that particular partner till the date of retirement or till the date of his death. Now, what are the amount to be debited to his account are drawings, interest on drawings and losses, goodwill written off, revaluation losses or the losses up to the date of death or retirement. In this way, we will be calculating the net amount payable to the retiring partner or to the deceased partner. The various aspects to be covered on retirement or death are new ratio or gaining ratio. Then how do we calculate revaluation account and distribution of profit and losses? How do we adjust the capital on retirement? What is the treatment of goodwill? How do we settle the claims? And in case the settlement is not there, then how do we settle the loan? Now how to calculate the new ratio on retirement or death? If nothing is given, the old ratio will be taken as new ratio. Now, suppose A, B, C are partners, B dies and nothing is mentioned. So, A and C will share in the same ratio. What was their existing ratio? That is old ratio is equal to new ratio if nothing is mentioned. But otherwise, if something is mentioned, then new ratio will be calculated accordingly. That is old ratio plus whatever they have gained on the retirement or death of that partner. So, we can say new ratio is equal to old plus gaining or old plus gaining ratio prescribed in the question itself. So, sometimes you are given the new ratio, then you can calculate the gain. But if you are not given and it is said that they are gaining in this particular ratio, then you first calculate that gain and then add in that old ratio to get the new ratio, right. Now, what is the formula for gaining ratio? That is new ratio minus old ratio. So, whatever you have gained, it will come to the question. Now, let us practice some question on this point. Let us assume x, y, z three partners with ratio 5, 3, 2, y retires and his share is taken by x and z in the ratio of 1 is to 2. Now, please see here it is mentioned that y share is being distributed between x and z in the ratio of 1 is to 2. So, now we have to calculate the new ratio and if this was not mentioned, then it would have been the same 5 is to 2, right. So, let us calculate now what will be the gain for x and z. Now, x new ratio will be his old ratio plus the gaining that is 5 by 10 plus 
one third of three by ten that is the gain which makes it six by ten. Similarly, for z ratio we will see old ratio two by ten plus two third of the gain three by ten that makes it four by ten. So, the new ratio now becomes six is to four. Now, if you want to calculate gaining ratio, you can do new ratio minus old ratio, but there is no need because it is already given in the question that they are gaining in the ratio of 1 is to 2, right. So, gaining ratio becomes 1 is to 2. Let us understand this concept again by one more question. Let us assume there are three partners P Q R with the ratio 5 3 2. Q retires and his share is taken by P and R, 2 by third of his share. Please understand 2 by third of his share by P and 1 by 3 of his share by Q. So, P new share becomes the old ratio plus whatever he has gained that is 3 by 10 into 2 by 3 this makes it 7 by 10. Similarly, R share will be old ratio that is 2 by 10 plus whatever he has gained one third of 3 by 10 which makes it 3 by 10. So, the new ratio becomes 7 is to 3 and the gaining ratio again is the same 2 is to 1 because it is given in the question. So, what we have learnt is gaining ratio is the same which is given in the question and if new ratio is given only then we have to calculate the gaining ratio. Now, coming to the next point that is goodwill. If the retiring partner or deceased partner is entitled to his share of goodwill because of his past effort as he was there as a partner. So, he must get his share of goodwill what he has earned in the past along with the remaining partners. So, who will give that share? Yes, continuing partners will give that share in which ratio? Yes, in which they will gain. So, what will be the entry? As usual gaining partners debit to sacrificing partners. Now, before discussing the accounting treatment of goodwill that is what are the general entries to be made, let us see the position given by ICAI that is Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. The institute has issued one accounting standard named 26 which says no goodwill will be raised in the books of account until you purchase that goodwill. Which means that we cannot do an entry like this goodwill account debit to bank unless we have paid some money for that. So, goodwill account debit this word can come only when you have purchased it or you have paid money for it right. Next thing if existing goodwill is given in the balance sheet, it is better to write it off at the earliest because it is a financial prudence. Prudence means samajdari that write off this goodwill because it is a non productive asset. So, write it off at the earliest and the outgoing partner must be compensated in the gaining ratio by whom those who are gaining that is the remaining partners. Now, we come to the entries part. If the existing goodwill is written off, the entry will be all partners capital account debit to goodwill account in old ratio. Because this goodwill was shared by all the old partners, so they will write off the goodwill in old ratio. Old partners in old ratio existing goodwill. Now, giving credit to the outgoing partner for the share of goodwill, we will debit continuing partner account debit to retiring or deceased partner account in gaining ratio. Now, this is a normal journal entry which we are doing, but sometime it can happen that continuing partner are also sacrificing. One of the continuing partner is gaining and the other is sacrificing, then what will happen? then one continuing partner who is gaining will be debited and the other continuing partner who is sacrificing will be credited along with that outgoing partner. Let us understand this very good concept 
with a question. Suppose there are four partners A, B, C, D sharing in the ratio of 4, 3, 2, 1 and goodwill is existing in the balance sheet at rupees 2 lakh. C retires and A, B, D will share in the future in the ratio of 3, 3, 2. Now, while solving this question, first of all we will write off the old goodwill that is 2 lakh rupees in old ratio 4, 3, 2, 1. The entry will be A account debit, B account debit, C account debit and D account debit in their old ratio that is 80,000, 60,000, 40,000 and 20,000 and goodwill will be created 2 lakh rupees. So, the existing goodwill is finished off. Now, who is retiring? Mr. C, his share is 2 by 10 that is 2 lakh into 2 by 10 that is 40,000. Mr. C will get 40,000 and he will be credited. Normally, what we do is A, B, D debit to C. So, that makes it C will be gaining 40,000 and A, B, D will be giving 40,000. But let us see if somebody is sacrificing among the existing. Let us see the question again. Now, what is the old ratio for A, B and D? 4 by 10, 3 by 10, 1 by 10. And what is the new ratio? 3 by 8, 3 by 8 and 2 by 8. Let us calculate first. Now, the gaining ratio of A is 3 by 8 minus 4 by 10 and if we take the LCM and do the calculation, it comes to minus 2 by 80. Minus 2 by 80 means he is not gaining, he is sacrificing. So, B and D will be debited and A and C will be credited because A is not gaining, he is sacrificing. Those who are sacrificing will get and those who are gaining will be debited. Now, the gain of B comes to 6 by 80 and gain of D comes to 12 by 80. So, the entry will change now because A has sacrificed. So, the entry will be B account debit, D account debit to A and to C. C share we have already calculated 40,000 and that is A share is equal to what 5,000 and it will be shared between B and D in the ratio of 1 is to 2 that is 15,000 and 30,000 respectively. So, you clearly see that generally the entry is A, B, D to C, but now in this case as A is sacrificing, so he is credited and not debited. As you can see from this calculation, C sacrifice 2 by 10 that is 40,000 and A sacrifice 2 by 80 into 2 lakh that is 5,000 and B and D are gaining by 15,000 and 30,000. So, in today's lecture what you have learnt is what is the accounting treatment of goodwill? How do we calculate gaining and sacrificing and how do we calculate the amount payable to the partner? In the next class, we will be continuing from here and do some more questions on this. Till then, goodbye. Thank you very much.